DC fans are in a treat for like no other. The Flash's new movie reveals plots that will flip the world upside down. Brace yourselves, for Michael Keaton's Batman is set to don the cape once again. After over three decades since his last appearance as the Dark Knight, Keaton's return in The Flash marks a groundbreaking reunion that some of us have been eagerly awaiting. For those of you who have wondered what transpired after the events of the Burton movies, your questions are about to be answered. The recent Batman 89 series from DC Comics has continued with the enthralling tale of Keaton's Batman, picking up the threads right where Batman Returns left off. So let's get cracking. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, let's begin. Batman 1989. Two journalists, Alexander and Vicky Vale, embark on a mission to uncover the truth about Batman. Meanwhile, mob boss Carl Grissom plans to eliminate his associate, Jack Napier, by sending him on a dangerous mission. But Napier's life takes a tragic turn when Batman intervenes, and he falls into a vat of chemicals, becoming the deranged Joker. The Joker, in a rage of revenge, dives into his bag of criminal tricks. He unleashes a deadly toxin called Smilex on Gotham City, causing victims to die from uncontrollable laughter. He also lures Vicky into a deadly trap, but Batman saves Vicky Vale from the Joker's clutches and reveals his research on Smilex in the Batcave. Love and duty clash for Bruce Wayne as he reveals his identity to Vicky, interrupted by the Joker's revelation that he caused Wayne's tragic past. During the chaos, the Joker shoots at Wayne, but is thwarted by a tray. Later, Wayne decides to destroy the Axis plant producing Smilex, while the Joker lures citizens into a grand parade that is going to end with Smilex gas. However, Batman foils the Joker's plans, and the final confrontation takes place in a cathedral, where Bruce reveals the truth to Joker. Realizing Batman's identity, the Joker falls to his death. Gotham is filled with hope as the bat signal shines and Batman vows to protect the city. Well, folks, that brings us to the next installment of the Burtonverse. Batman Returns 1992 the story begins with the cruel abandonment of a deformed child named Oswald by his heartless parents. Raised by penguins in the sewers, Oswald, now known as the Penguin, seeks acceptance from Gotham's elite. He kidnaps Max Shrek, a corrupt industrialist, to force his cooperation. Shrek devises a plan involving the mayor's infant child to make the Penguin a hero in the public's eyes. Meanwhile, Selina Kyle, Shrek's secretary, survives a deadly murder attack Attempt. However, this incident flips a switch inside of her, and she transforms into the vengeful Catwoman. Often, Batman crosses paths with Catwoman while investigating the Penguin's connection to the Red Triangle gang. As their paths intertwine, a romance sparks between Bruce Wayne and Selina. On Christmas Eve, the Penguin and Catwoman capture the Ice Princess and frame Batman for her murder. Batman battles the Penguin, who plans to kill Gotham's firstborn sons in revenge. On the other hand, Catwoman confronts Shrek, but is seemingly killed during their fight. Batman thwarts Penguin's attempt to unleash a penguin army armed with missiles. In the end, Catwoman's fate remains unknown, and like always, Batman vows to protect his very own Gotham. What went wrong? The Batman film franchise has had a tumultuous journey, marked by creative shifts and varying audience reactions. Following the dark and atmospheric Batman Returns, a new director, Joel Schumacher, took the command for the third installment, Batman Forever. Schumacher aimed to infuse a more lighthearted and family-friendly tone into the series. However, this change didn't resonate with everyone, and the absence of Michael Keaton, who declined to reprise his role as Batman, further raised concerns among fans. In recent years, the legacy of the original Burton films has been revived in the form of a comic book series titled Batman 89. This continuation of the narrative 
narrative from Tim Burton's movies offers fans a chance to revisit the dark and atmospheric world that captivated audiences in the late 80s and early 90s. Amidst the anticipation surrounding Batman's future, news of Michael Keaton potentially reprising his role as the caped crusader in the upcoming film The Flash has stirred excitement among fans. However, we won't be revealing anything about it just yet. Return of the Burtonverse it's Halloween night in the infamous Gotham City, and the streets are buzzing with trick-or-treaters. Things are about to go south. A gang of criminals, all decked out as clowns and led by a guy named Emmett, launches an audacious attack on an armored convoy, and to throw everyone off their trail, they incite a riot, targeting innocent civilians. Little did they know, their actions would ignite a spark of over-enthusiastic heroism in those dressed as the caped crusader himself, Batman. In a high stakes game of cat and mouse, Batman teams up with the reliable Commissioner Gordon to foil the robbery. As the criminals attempt to make their getaway via helicopter, our Dark Knight swoops in, gracefully attaching the vehicle to a nearby building using his trusty grappling hook. The chaos erupts as the vehicle crashes, and the thugs on the ground shift their focus to taking down Batman. With no other option, our hero jumps into a revamped Batmobile and races away, leaving the Gotham City Police Department to deal with the crooks on the scene. Meanwhile, District Attorney Harvey Dent and his fiery fiance Barbara Gordon find themselves caught up in the riots. When one of the thugs snatches Barbara's purse, Dent springs into action, giving chase like a man possessed. Using his unique double-headed coin to determine their fate, Dent sends the wrongdoers fleeing in fear. Convinced that Batman's mere presence has emboldened these gangs, Dent makes it his mission to wage a campaign against the Dark Knight. The sun rises on a new day, and Dent pays a visit to Wayne Manor, seeking Bruce Wayne's support. Over a hearty breakfast, Dent reveals that he has called the National Guard to restore order amidst the chaos. Frustrated with what he perceives as the Gotham City Police Department's incompetence and Commissioner Gordon's reliance on Batman, Dent implores Bruce to join forces in capturing the masked vigilante and bringing down the Commissioner. As Harvey departs, Bruce and his loyal confidant, Alfred, engage in a heartfelt discussion about Batman's future and the possibility of hanging up the cape for good. At the Gotham City Police Department, Barbara delves into the confiscated Batman equipment, realizing the level of high-tech sophistication involved. She and Dent begin to understand that Batman is operating with substantial financial backing. Meanwhile, Dent pays a visit to his childhood stomping ground, Burnside. During his journey, he reaches out to an automotive repair shop owned by his mentor, Jerome Otis, leveraging his connections to rally support for Gordon's dismissal from figures within the neighborhood. As Bruce watches a news report on these unfolding events, his sharp eyes catch a familiar sight, the bat signal illuminating the sky. Donning the mantle of Batman, he senses that Dent has set a trap. With the assistance of Detective Harvey Bullock, Bruce swiftly contacts Commissioner Gordon, and they agree to sever communication while Dent investigates them. Gordon, concerned for Batman's safety, warns him to lay low due to the National Guard's orders to capture him. Under the cover of the city's curfew, Batman finds himself drawn into a robbery at a local corner store. As the soldiers arrest the store owner for wielding a firearm, our hero tails the thief back to their hideout, only to discover a young individual who had stolen supplies for their baby sister rather than seeking the monetary gain. Suddenly, a mysterious figure dressed in a dark costume launches a surprise attack on Batman, causing him to stumble into a nearby alley. Before he can react, the assailant flees the scene, leaving Batman exposed to the watchful eyes of the nearby soldiers. Is this the end of the Dark Knight? Let's find out. Shadows of Solitude Batman finds himself in a dire situation, trying to outsmart the National Guard while avoiding harm. In a cunning move, he feigns surrender, only to unleash a blinding flashbang from his utility belt. Chaos ensues as the disoriented guards open fire, tragically shooting the young person Batman was chasing. Our hero, driven by his unwavering sense of justice, desperately tries to save him, but unfortunately, he plummets to his demise. Haunted by the weight of his actions, 
directions, Bruce retreats to the solitude of the Batcave, his mind consumed by contemplation. Meanwhile, Barbara takes charge of the confiscated Super Batarang and showcases its intricate systems to Harvey. Their curiosity peaked, they begin to suspect that Batman's access to such advanced equipment hints at the significant financial backing behind the masked vigilante. In the aftermath of the National Guard's actions, protests erupt in Burnside, drawing the attention of Jerome Otis and his employee, Drake Winston. As they witness the unfolding events, Harvey pays them a visit, seeking Drake's expertise in tracking down specific car components. Reluctantly, Drake declines the request. However, shortly after, members of the Burnside Council arrive, urging Harvey to stand in solidarity with the residents by participating in the protests. During the loud gathering, Drake stumbles upon a group of Batman impersonators attempting to break into a local electronics store. Driven by a sense of justice and a desire to protect his community, he dons a costume of his own and subdues the misguided imitators. The incident captures the attention of onlookers who dub him Robin, a nod to an interrupted comment made by one of the gang members. Unbeknownst to Drake, a missing member of the group secretly tails him, leading them both to the royal auto body. Taking Alfred's advice to heart, Bruce resolves to support the families affected in Burnside. However, dense confidence in the Gotham City Police Department begins to waver as his own appearance sparks mistrust. In a joint effort, Bruce and Dent arrange a meeting with the Burnside Council, where Bruce offers to fund the education of the borough's children. As Bruce leaves the meeting, he receives news that the royal auto body has been set ablaze by the Batman. Determined to uncover the truth, he gives chase, only to discover that Catwoman has already subdued the gang. Meanwhile, Harvey and Barbara, engaged in a discussion, realize that Bruce possesses insider information about the incident. As indicated by a name he mentioned during the meeting, their conversation is abruptly interrupted by the sight of the blazing fire, prompting them to rush back. Worried for Drake's safety, Harvey ventures into the garage only to find him missing as he attempts to make his way out. Disaster strikes when the staircase gives way, causing Dent to lose consciousness. To add to the danger, nearby car batteries begin to leak, intensifying the perilous situation. The tension mounts as our heroes grapple with personal dilemmas, hidden agendas, and a web of interconnected events. Will Batman find redemption for the tragic loss? You'll have to stick around to know more. Battles for Gotham Soul Harvey Dent, still unconscious, finds himself immersed in a vision where he rescues Drake and rises as Gotham's celebrated hero. His triumphant deeds catapult him to success, ultimately leading to his election as governor. Yet, in this dreamlike state, Harvey's mind wanders down a sinister path, blaming Bruce Wayne for orchestrating Batman's activities through hired mercenaries. The dream reaches its climax as Otis flips a coin, and the fateful result is Tails. In the midst of the blazing Inferno at the Royal Autobody, Bruce and Drake valiantly pull Harvey to safety, narrowly escaping another explosion. To their collective horror, they discover that half of Dent's face has been grotesquely disfigured by the corrosive battery acid. As Dent is whisked away for medical attention, Bruce confides in Drake, revealing the possibility that he may have breathed in the toxic fumes, endangering his lungs. Accompanying the paramedics, Barbara receives distressing news. Dent's life may be cut short, giving him a mere six months to live. Meanwhile, Bruce attempts to slip away unnoticed, but he finds himself subjected to interviews by the relentless press and the probing eyes of the police. Amidst the chaos, he learns that Drake may have witnessed the criminal's escape, potentially suspecting Bruce's involvement in their capture. Returning to the solace of Wayne Manor, Bruce discovers that he has become a media sensation, hailed for his heroic actions in Burnside. Drake, however, refuses offers of shelter from concerned residents, despite being targeted by the Batman and losing everything in the fire. As the following morning dawns, Bruce finds himself thrust into the harsh spotlight of media attention. Seeking counsel from Alfred, he recounts his encounter with Selina and his growing suspicions regarding Drake's possible knowledge of his role in the Batman incident. Meanwhile, the arsonists responsible for the blaze are released on bail and launch a massive lawsuit against the GCPD, alleging brutality suffered at the hands of Robin and Catwoman. In a compassionate move, Grace visits the hospital to arrange for Harvey's necessary plastic surgery, intending to cover the expense 
experiences himself. However, Dent's fractured psyche starts manifesting hallucinations of an alternate version of himself, belonging to an idealized world. This distorted Harvey presents him with various alternative events and consequences, including his own death in a car accident instead of his mother's demise, or being arrested for an act of vandalism. As Dent awakens, he begins to exhibit a more aggressive persona and mutilates his double-headed coin, using it as a twisted tool to determine Barbara's love for him. Meanwhile, Batman, upon receiving a message from Selina, tracks down Catwoman to the familiar rooftops near Shrek's, where their paths first intertwined in their alter egos. Engaging in playful banter and a flirtatious dance of words, Batman offers Selina an escape from the clutches of Gotham. As Selina shares details about her recent employment, Batman expresses concern about the legality of her activities. However, Catwoman challenges him on his relentless focus on street crimes while turning a blind eye to the white-collar crimes committed by the affluent. She claims to have shifted her attention towards those high-profile criminals. Batman also discovers that Selina has sought the help of a psychiatrist, but he soon realizes that the masked vigilante he encountered earlier is also under her care. Their conversation reaches a precipice, abruptly halted by a series of fires igniting across Gotham. Meanwhile, Dent, caught in the throes of his internal battle, resorts to flipping his disfigured coin to determine whether he will continue his fight for the soul of Gotham. The coin falls, revealing tales, a chilling omen of what is yet to come. The stakes have been raised, the heroes and villains face their inner demons, and the fate of Gotham hangs in the balance. Will the law and order in Gotham ever restore? How about we find out? Robin's Revelations In the midst of escalating tensions, a massive gathering of protesters forms to denounce the release of the arsonists. Lieutenant Bullock, defying Commissioner Gordon's orders for a peaceful demonstration, calls for the deployment of riot gear to contain the perceived troublemakers. This decision fractures the promises made by Gordon to the Burnside Council, tarnishing his reputation. Sensing the need to support the protesters, Drake takes action. Utilizing spray paint to disrupt police operations and aid the demonstrators. With this unexpected advantage, the group fiercely combats the officers, even turning their own equipment against them. Eventually, the overwhelmed officers retreat, and Gordon takes charge to salvage the situation. However, the fallout from the violent clash mars his standing among the people. Back at the Batcave, Bruce is briefed by Alfred on Robin's actions and the aftermath. Before retiring for the night, Pennyworth unveils his findings on Drake's background, uncovering ties to the illustrious Wayne family. In the hospital, Harvey's mental state continues to deteriorate as he becomes increasingly reliant on the coin to dictate his decisions. He rejects Bruce's offer of assistance, driving a wedge between him and Barbara. Under cover of darkness, he manages to escape the hospital as his alter ego, the other Harvey, takes hold. Driven by curiosity about Alfred's discoveries, Bruce Bruce delves into Drake's past, unearthing the story of his family's once prominent presence in Burnside. Their motor company, a major employer for the residents, was eventually acquired by Wayne Motors and subsequently shut down by its new management. Drake, invited to Wayne Manor, implores Bruce to testify against the arsonists while hinting at his suspicions of having subjugated the gang. Refusing to acknowledge Catwoman's involvement, he brandishes a vial, claiming it contains acid, and initiates a confrontation with Bruce. Despite the scuffle that ensues, Bruce emerges victorious, only to have Drake disclose his realization of Batman's true identity. In a surprising twist, Drake reveals himself to be the mysterious masked vigilante whom Batman had encountered previously. As Selina infiltrates the GCPD by assuming the guise of an IT support technician, she infects the police department's systems with a malicious virus while pilfering valuable data. During her interview with Barbara, Fragments of information surface, indicating that Harvey has mysteriously vanished from the hospital, possibly making an escape attempt. As other officers dig deeper, they discover sightings of Dent within the GCPD. Stealing confidential files, Dent eludes capture and disappears into Labyrinthine subway system, heading towards the abandoned Burnside Station, a place he plans to transform into his own base of operations. Over a shared meal, Bruce unravels the truth behind Drake's deductions regarding his secret identity. Initially inclined to turn him over to the authorities, Winston reconsiders after Batman's role in saving Dent from the Inferno. However, he confronts Bruce, 
highlighting the cycle of violence that his actions perpetuate and the unintended inspiration he provides to the copycat vigilantes. As they journey to the Batcave together, Bruce reveals the arsenal of equipment, including a new vehicle. In this pivotal moment, Drake offers his assistance, proposing to become Batman's trusted psychic in their shared crusade. The stage is set for an uncertain alliance, as two masked guardians of justice stand side by side, their destinies intertwined. Will their partnership yield redemption and a path towards restoring order in Gotham? Only the next issue will reveal the answers, so shall we? Destructive Dent Unleashed As the tension escalates, Harvey Dent, fueled by his deteriorating mental state, manages to track down and abduct a member of the notorious Joker gang, responsible for the Halloween riots and attempted robbery. Contemplating whether to pay him double the original offer, Dent persuades the captive to enlist more members to his cause. Meanwhile, Commissioner Gordon, utilizing the stolen files as a lead, pays a visit to Barbara to ascertain if she's had any contact with Dent since his escape from the hospital. In a moment of frustration, Barbara loses her temper, prompting Gordon to reveal his resignation from the GCPD and confess his realization that his compliance with Batman was unjustified. Departing from the scene, Barbara discovers a note from Dent requesting a meeting at Burnside Park. During their patrol, Batman and Robin receive reports of a series of explosions rocking the subways near GCPD headquarters. Simultaneously, Dent dispatches his men to attack the GCPD while arranging snipers to target those attempting to flee the building. Exploiting the chaos, Dent's crew gains access to the evidence room. With the room overrun by criminals, Gordon activates the bat signal, summoning Batman to the scene. While Batman protects Gordon, he dispatches Robin to neutralize the snipers. Accompanied by his gang, Dent steals the money confiscated from the Joker's gang's failed heist. In the process, he shoots Bullock, who tries to impede his progress. Confronted by Batman and Gordon, Dent employs Barbara's Super Batarang to incapacitate Batman and inadvertently cause him to fire a tranquilizer dart into Gordon. Holding Gordon hostage, Dent forces Batman to retreat by threatening to kill the commissioner and save Bullock's life. Surrounded by the police and compelled to surrender, Dent finds himself aided by Robin, who uses the Bat Cycle to incapacitate the officers, enabling their escape. In the Batcave, Batman reveals that the tranquilizer dart contained a tracking device, enabling them to locate Gordon once he resurfaces. The following morning, Dent distributes $900,000 of the stolen money to the citizens of Burnside, acting under some form of instruction. While he keeps Gordon captive in the station, Dent's anxiety mounts. Capitalizing on a momentary distraction, Gordon manages to surreptitiously attach the tracking device to Dent, allowing Batman to trace his whereabouts. With a lock on Dent's location, Batman and Robin follow him as he heads for his meeting with Barbara at Gotham Park, only to discover that both Dent's men and the GCPD awaiting them. Under the guise of being alone, Barbara confronts Dent, attending to apprehend him. However, Catwoman intervenes, sparking a fierce shootout between the officers and Dent's henchmen. Seizing the opportunity to escape, Dent flees to his hideout. In a state of panic over Barbara's apparent betrayal, Gordon confronts Dent, condemning his actions and urging him to confront his true nature. Filled with desperation and driven by allegiance to the coin, Dent shoots Gordon. It is at this crucial juncture that Batman arrives to confront the unhinged Dent, setting the stage for a pivotal confrontation. Unmasked and undecided, as the epic confrontation between Batman and Harvey Dent unfolds, the Dark Knight attempts to reason with Dent, urging him to surrender and end the madness. However, consumed by his delusions and fueled by desperation, Harvey makes a break for it, clutching a mysterious briefcase tightly in his hand. Batman swiftly reacts, deploying a roped batarang to immobilize Dent. But just as victory seems within reach, a catastrophic turn of events takes place. Dent triggers explosives cunningly concealed within the station, resulting in a powerful detonation that renders Batman unconscious and inadvertently unmasks him before Dent's eyes. Seizing the opportunity, Dent captures this shocking revelation in a photograph and hastily escapes. Leaving Robin and Catwoman to arrive on the scene, they waste no time in whisking the wounded Bruce back to Alfred's care, where he can receive the necessary medical attention. As Bruce gradually regains consciousness, he finds solace in the company of Selina, engaging in a heartfelt conversation. 
During their exchange, Selena discloses her personal mission of targeting the Lincoln Savings and Loan Company due to their unholy alliance with the mob. She unveils a disturbing truth. The organization had enlisted the Joker gang to steal specific documents, but Batman's timely intervention disrupted their plans, inadvertently leading to the documents falling into Harvey Dent's possession. As Bruce absorbs this newfound information and grapples with the revelation of his unmasked identity, he begins to ponder the possibility of a life free from the burdensome cowl, envisioning a future by Selena's side. Meanwhile, Harvey Dent embarks on a treacherous path, convening secret meetings with Gotham's most notorious mobsters and corrupt politicians. Armed with blackmail material, Dent coerces them into becoming his personal enforcers. Unyielding in his pursuit of power, he ruthlessly eliminates Carmine Falcone when met with resistance. Dent's next move takes him to Otis, seeking to secure his loyalty. Yet when Otis rejects Dent's advances and attempts to undermine him with the Burnside Council, Dent is forced to resort to extreme measures, ultimately ending Otis's life. Drake, driven by his unwavering loyalty to justice, confronts Dent in a fierce clash, but Harvey cunningly escapes and leaves behind a trail of evidence, framing Drake for the crime. With knowledge of Harvey's intended meeting, Bruce brings Dent to the hollowed confines of the Batcave, a place that holds both secrets and salvation. Dent plans to exploit the captured photograph as a means of blackmail, offering to arrange Drake's release in exchange for Bruce's compliance. Yet Bruce, always the strategist, presents a different proposition, the chance for redemption and restoration. He offers Dent the opportunity to heal his disfigurement and regain his former position, joining forces to vanquish the criminal underworld that plagues the city. As Harvey prepares to flip his infamous coin to decide their fate, the cunning Catwoman concealed within the shadows takes decisive action. She severs the supports of the giant penny artifact hanging in the Batcave, causing Harvey to teeter perilously on a collapsing ledge. Bruce, driven by his unwavering commitment to save lives, extends a desperate hand to prevent Dent's fall, but tragedy strikes as Harvey plummets to his demise, his mind swirling with visions of countless alternate realities. Overwhelmed by Selina's ruthless actions, Bruce reprimands her and asserts that he had switched Harvey's coin with a clever duplicate. However, Selina, undeterred, departs, leaving behind a concealed bug she had employed to clandestinely observe Bruce's every move. Retrieving Harvey's revolver, a solemn Bruce surrenders it to the authorities, ensuring that Dent will be held accountable for his crimes. In doing so, Bruce simultaneously exonerates Drake of the murder charges that had haunted him. Empowered by the newfound determination, the young vigilante Drake decides to venture forth on his own, commandeering the Bat Cycle and providing Bruce with a thought-provoking suggestion. He advises Bruce on Naisha, the baby girl of the young thief who died due to the misfire of the National Guards. Drake wants Bruce to relinquish Naisha's trust fund, suggesting that they entrust her well-being to Bruce's sister. Meanwhile, Barbara, still reeling from the devastating losses she has endured, receives two unexpected letters. One, from Catwoman, proposes an audacious alliance, while the other, from Beyond Dent, reveals Bruce's secret identity as Batman. Several weeks pass, and Bruce finds himself enveloped in a dream, one where he's married to Selina, enjoying a blissful family life. However, abruptly awoken by Alfred's presence, Bruce clutches Harvey's coin, symbolizing his struggle to determine whether he should persist as Batman or embrace a different path altogether. Will Bruce Wayne don his dark cape once again, or will he simply look after Gotham using charity? We are as eager and as clueless as you fellas. Let's keep our fingers crossed and hope to see more of the Dark Knight's adventures in comics as well as on the big screen. What's with the new Flash movie? The new film, The Flash, appears to be a unique blend of a legacy sequel and a retcon of the Tim Burton Batman movies. The trailer strongly suggests that Barry Allen, also known as The Flash, inadvertently created the Burtonverse by attempting to change the past and prevent his mother, Nora Allen, from dying. In the trailer, when questioned by Michael Keaton's Batman as to why he is fighting to save the specific universe, Barry explains that this is the universe where his mother is alive. This 
This implies that by altering the course of events and saving Nora Allen, The Flash unknowingly created a new universe. This universe is depicted as one where Batman has been active since the 1980s, and there are no other known superheroes or the Justice League. Although this alteration could be seen as Barry Allen traveling to a different world, it becomes evident that he explicitly states he created a world with no metahumans. The trailer suggests that this world without metahumans is the universe inhabited by Michael Keaton's Batman, where no other superheroes exist. Therefore, The Flash seems to be delving into a multiverse storyline that goes beyond Barry Allen simply traveling to an existing world. Instead, it suggests that the Tim Burton Batman universe is the result of the Flashpoint universe Barry Allen inadvertently creates by saving his mother. In retrospect, it can be interpreted as if the Flash is responsible for the creation of the Burtonverse timeline. This intricate narrative twist adds layers of complexity and opens up exciting possibilities for the film, as it explores the consequences of Barry Allen's actions and the implications for the entire DC multiverse. Marvelous Verdict In conclusion, the return of Tim Burton's version of Batman to the big screen, as seen in The Flash, brings a sense of nostalgia and excitement for the fans of the iconic director's unique take on The Dark Knight. With the inclusion of Michael Keaton reprising his role as Batman, there is a renewed interest in revisiting Burton's atmospheric and visually striking Gotham City. The prospect of exploring the Burtonverse within the context of a multiverse storyline adds an intriguing twist to the narrative. Allowing for new interpretations, it reignites the fascination with Burton's unique take on the Dark Knight while embracing the vast potential of the multiverse concept. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone.